The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care to not perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners, so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, Go into your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you fast, Anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden, and your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate Ash Wednesday, a day that marks the beginning of our Lenten journey. Of course, as with any journey, we can benefit from a road map to guide us in the right direction. Now, for those of us who are old enough to remember the mid-20th century, a time well before portable GPS devices and computer-generated maps, we might recall going to our local gas station to get a free road map for just about any state in which we want to travel. Well, I'm happy to report that the Church of St. Luke continues that great tradition by offering each of us a free road map to guide us along our Lenten journey. And where can we find this road map? Right inside our parish bulletin from last weekend's Sunday Mass. So if you don't have your own copy of the parish bulletin, you might also want to check out the St. Luke's TomsRiver.org website which also has all the same information. As it includes a complete road map for all the Lenten activities from Ash Wednesday right through and including Easter Sunday. Among them are the Stations of the Cross that occur each Friday morning after the 11 a.m. Mass and again on Friday evening at 7 p.m. The road map also includes Eucharistic Adoration, penance and Holy Week services, a rice bowl collection, and our Easter Mass schedule. This roadmap offers people of every age the opportunity to participate in the sacred church tradition, where we take a step back from the busy world around us and reevaluate our life priorities, a time where we refocus our hearts and minds on God's great love for us and the great sacrifice that Jesus made through his passion, death, and resurrection for our salvation. Our parish bulletin also includes Bishop David O'Connell's directive on days of fasting and abstinence, along with information regarding the Holy Father's Jubilee Year of Mercy. It explains how we can receive in this extraordinary year of mercy a special plenary indulgence. Two words that simply mean the complete remission of all temporal punishment due to sin. With so much information packed into a single road map, this is one parish bulletin that you will want to read cover to cover. Now then, 
Let's consider for just a few moments why the church asks us to make a 40-day Lenten journey each year. First, let me begin by explaining the spiritual significance of the number 40. Scripture scholars tell us that whenever we hear the word 40 used in the Bible, we can apply the symbolic meaning of testing or setting a new direction in our lives. Some examples include Noah's Ark surviving 40 days of rain, or Moses spending 40 years in the desert before God called him to Pharaoh to lead the Israelites out of Egyptian slavery. We also hear that the Israelites wandered for 40 years in the desert before they entered the Promised Land. Even Jesus, who was baptized by John the Baptist, was drawn into the desert for 40 days to pray and to deal with Satan's temptations. Only then did Jesus set out to preach the gospel. It is with this spiritual backdrop that the church calls us to make this Lenten journey of 40 days with fasting, prayer, and almsgiving until our Lenten journey brings us to our destination of Holy Thursday, where we shall recognize and experience Jesus, institute the Holy Mass, and transform ordinary bread and wine into his most precious body and blood, heavenly food that we recognize as the Holy Eucharist. So how might we begin this 40-day Lenten journey? Picture, if you will, a large circle. Next, I would ask us to place in our circle those things in our lives that we consider most important. One thing that we might all agree on to put in the circle is food and water. We might also include family members, relatives, friends, our pets, money, electricity, heat, automobiles, work, and even medical care. There may be others who would add music, sports, video games, movie stars, or a vacation. The things that we place into our life circle are as varied and unique as each of us who are present here today, simply because it identifies who we are and what we value most in life. As we look over all these things that we have placed inside our life circle, I want to ask this important question. Where is Jesus? Is he in the middle of your circle? Is he along the edge of the circle? Is he outside the circle? Or for some of us, Jesus may have been missed altogether. One of the key aspects of Lent is to look into our hearts and ask this challenging question. Where does Jesus fit into the things I cherish most in my life? And if for whatever reason he is not placed in the center of our circle, the church invites us to use this Lenten journey to do a spiritual reset, if you will, and rearrange our life priorities to move Jesus Christ into the very core and center of our lives. Listen once again to the words proclaimed by the prophet Joel in our first reading. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart. Give me your heart, not simply your outer garments, and return to the Lord. In today's gospel, Jesus calls each of us as his disciples to perform righteous deeds, to give alms, and to pray. Not because we will receive any recognition or self-glory from the world, but out of our love and gratitude for, to our God for all he has done and continues to do in our lives. And so today, as we take that first step in our Lenten journey, 
May our loving God give us the grace and gifts of the Holy Spirit to place Jesus at the very center of our lives, not only for the next 40 days, but for each and every day for the rest of our lives, until we will one day see Jesus face to face and hear those glorious words, Well done, good and faithful servant. Now enter into the heavenly kingdom my heavenly Father has prepared for you.